welcome to the Crouch Ranch, you guys. Uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be butchering some of our Cornish uh, birds, and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about our setup. Uh, just a brief going over it today. Um, we've got it more in depth in some of our other videos you can check out. So we've got our uh, cooler here. We're going to put water, which we've got going on in here already. I'm going to add some salt and then we're going to add some ice. The salt reacts with the ice and actually helps uh, get everything colder faster. Um, you want to get the birds down to 40 degrees as quickly as you can once you butcher them. So let's go ahead and add that salt. If you sit in this right now, you become a mermaid, right? Isn't that what happens? Very sure. Oops, sorry, I didn't realize that was that nice. Uh, I'll take that back. <laughs> you know what crocodiles and you would say about that knife? That's not a knife. That's not a knife. Because we've got our Yardbird Chicken Plucker, which we did an in-depth review on and a few assembly videos on. over here that we put the birds in upside down head first so you can pull the head down and do the dirty business there so here's our workstation normally we take this table and we raise it up on blocks to give us a little bit of a boost so we're not bent over trying to work on these birds um, but today we're going to try something different we're just going to raise up the actual workstation for the gutting um, and what Mike and I do when we're working together when we do the birds which we try to time it so we can do it together. We have a nice little assembly line going. So Mike stands here and guts. I'm perfectly capable of doing it um, and I've done it from start to finish by myself before as well for all you naysayers. But uh, <laughs> but I do uh, generally just keep the line moving and I will do the actual slaughter and the dunking in the hot water and all that good stuff. So here we go. Let's go uh, dispatch of some birds since it is Easter weekend. Let's go send some chickens to meet LBJ. Hey Mike, what, what are you doing? Seriously? What, what are you doing? Are, are you on your hands and knees uh, scrubbing? Well, apparently I am. <laughs> are, are, you, are, you, are you doing woman's work? I'm just kidding. That is just so politically incorrect. I can't believe you would even say that. Like, oh my god, really? I'm just kidding. I know I'm going to get a bunch of hate comments now. <laughs> There's something in this pot that don't want to come out. Yeah, well. How did I cook in this? Well, you remember the last full moon and I was dancing naked under the moonlight, sacrificing chickens and boiling toads and I and Boiling toads, that's what That's what it was. All right. <laughs> that makes perfect sense. Right? So, I'm uh, a little nervous about the uh, weight of these birds. I'm a little concerned that they may be actually too big. We're shooting for like one and three quarter to two pound Cornish hen. And, uh, like a traditional Cornish game hen size. This is what I got here. This is entertaining for me. See how once you get them upside down guys, they stop freaking out. The one I'm holding that I've been holding this whole time while he's been catching that one is completely chill. Once you hold them still upside down for a minute, they go into like a trance, guys. They just chill out. It's like voodoo. Voodoo. Okay guys, we're getting ready to actually slaughter these birds. Um, we've picked out one that's a little bit larger and one that's a little bit smaller out of this batch so we can get an idea of where we are weight-wise on these birds. Unfortunately, we can't show you the actual slaughtering of the birds on YouTube. 
We will, however, have the complete version of this video on our Patreon channel, so go check that out if you want to see the start to finish of how we actually process these birds from the time we catch them until the time they're ready for the freezer. This is like, I think this is going to be the new trend on like Pinterest for nail design. What do you think? It's very avant-garde. No? <laughs> Apparently we have an important phone call from who? Tony, what's up? Huh. I'm actually um, you're on you're on camera right now. Um, talking to uh, I'm talking to my YouTube people, answering Tony phone call. What's going on? Pardon. Can I have some extra bell peppers? Want to see a drink? Did I? Bell peppers. What what kind? Green, red, and yellow. Uh, California wonder pepper, and I'd have to look at the tag to see what the other varieties are. Uh, we've got those, and we also have some of those sweet yellow onions that you're welcome to. Yeah, absolutely. And I've got a pack of the red onions, uh, way more than I'm going to be able to plant. We can do, we can trade. We can do a little horse swapping, except there'll be no horses involved. I might be planted out on the red onions. We've got 60 in the ground. <laughs> All right, I'll keep the red onions. I'll, yeah. I'll just take your booty. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that. Is that prison lingo? I don't know. <laughs> All okay. right. Well, cool. I'll let you get back to what you're doing. I also have the uh, sticks of fire you guys wanted for cutting. So you can use that up. So give me a shot when you're done, and we'll, uh, we'll work it out. Roger. Sounds good. All right. I'll see you. Later. Negotiating here with our neighbors and friends. <laughs> a little, little farm negotiation going on. <laughs> so, uh, Mike's got a new knife that he's super proud of. He actually got that as like an early birthday present, kind of. I did. Yeah, I bought it for myself for my birthday. It's a Benchmade brand. I, I like the side draw holster. It's really cool. Uh, it's actually designed uh, specifically for skinning animals. And uh, we're going to use it today for culling these birds. We actually used that uh, to cut the pork tenderloin in the uh, we did. barrel yeah. house cooker video. And it's got a lot of... Uh, but look, this is what I love. This is how he's going to open his beer since we're outside. It's got a lot of uses. Skinning animals, uh, slicing a tenderloin, or... Popping a top. Popping a top, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> There you go. There you have it. Benchmade. Cheers. Benchmade and Blue Moon. So these guys have bled out. They are ready to be scalded. All right, so we've got our scalding water here. And I put a few drops of uh, just like dish soap that helps kind of loosen their feathers up a little bit. And you're going to put them in all the way to their kneecaps and kind of twist them around a few times. And depending on your birds, you want the water somewhere between 150. Pull tight. I'm holding it. Good. That's good. All right. 150 to 160 range. So now we're going to turn this water on and turn the plucker on and throw these guys, since they're so small, I'm going to throw them in together. Switches to your left underneath. I know. Oh, I didn't know if you'd check. because you don't want them to get beat up. And obviously, there's gonna be just a few, you know, that it doesn't catch. Because again, I'm only left them in there for about 15 seconds because I don't want to, uh, I don't want to risk breaking a wing or whatever, tearing skin if you leave them in too long since they're so, these are more game hen size. Okay, so then I just kind of give them a quick little once over. Uh, I'm not too worried about this little 
butt nugget here because that's going to go by the wayside. But um, just making sure everything else is kind of pulled off, which there's a few little, little pin feathers on the wings. Some of this too you'll get, um, a few more will kind of pop out from the skin once you have them uh, in the ice bath for a few hours. Before you bag them, we give them a once over again, and I kind of make sure there's no uh, under the skin pin feathers that kind of emerge. But these guys are ready to be cleaned now and gutted. I christen them ready. They will not risen. <laughs> okay, so Mike is going to be uh, <laughs> disassembling this bird. It's about to be a deconstructed chicken. <laughs> Is that politically correct enough? Sure. Sure. So first he's going to start with, uh, he slices back, which we didn't show. We'll show that on the next one. We were busy trying to get the screen right here. <clears throat> but uh, you do a little slice over the neck, and then you loosen the crop, which that's the crop, which I had a good idea to, to do before you're going to butcher birds is to not feed them for a day. Now these guys are pastured, so they, he's still going to have some grass and whatever in his crop, but it won't be full of feed and whatnot. Then you make a little incision down here by the uh, cloaca, which is the all-purpose hole that every bird has, which is one of my favorite words. Gizzard. Gizzard. And you can start pulling all of the internal organs. And, and I like to just make a sweep over the top of the gizzard like this, and I'm trying to free the, the kidneys are up there above that, uh, and I want those to come out, I'm not kidneys, I'm sorry, uh, the liver. Uh, oh, I got the heart there between my two fingers. Oop, there's the heart. So I want those, those livers to come out on top, that way I know I got everything. Uh, what I don't want to do is bust an intestine while it's inside the bird. That yeah, just that's just no bueno. And then I got a hold of a tube right now that happens to be the other end of all this. So I'm going to start pulling. See that coming through? I'll pull it all the way through. Boom. And then everything just kind of comes out onto the table like this. Okay. Now I'm going to get rid of all this. Uh, are we going to keep these? Uh... Yes, please. Okay. You don't have to keep the gizzard. But okay. Cause, what about liver? Well, actually, you could keep the gizzard because I can just throw that all in the crock pot for the pig. All right. So we try not to waste anything around here. So when we're cleaning the chickens, um, we do have a few people that do like the hearts. I've had somebody buy a bunch of the hearts off of me and the livers to make cat food for their kitties. Um, but most of the time, and some people have bought like a bag of hearts and a bag of kidneys and whatnot. But most of the time, um, I just put them in a big crock pot and I feed them to the pig. Now if you're trying to save these livers, you're going to see this green sack that's attached to the liver. The bile duct. That guy right there, that's actually your bile sack. Um, you do not want to cut that. It's you, gross. You do not want to get that on anything, so make sure you leave some of that liver on it when you remove the liver. Okay, so now I'm going to take that whole butt nugget off, okay? Butt nugget. We like to say butt nugget. I don't think that's like the scientific term for it, but... That's what we call it. It's it's our term for it. We call it know, the butt nugget. We're, we're more, we know more than the scientists some days. That's right. This is actually not an ideal knife for this. I just about cut myself right there. Well, it's a little big for such a small bird. Yeah, I'm going to go get a different knife after this bird. Yeah, that little pairing, not pairing This knife, is a skinning skin. knife. I was just really excited about it, so I wanted to use it, but I don't want to use it anymore. This is, well, this bird, these are game hen size, so hopefully, fingers crossed, they're game hen size. But they're definitely smaller than most of the chickens that we will end up doing so we don't want to uh all that goes bye bye yeah you do not want to keep that okay that is... i'm going to rinse this out one time real quick he's going to do the hokey pokey and turn himself around chicken rainbows <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I've got still got a couple things inside there. I've got my lungs up here, and I've got my kidneys back here. So I'm going to reach in there up to the to the uh, rib cage, and and the lungs are really spongy, and they're kind of usually have to get them out in a few passes just because they tend to kind of stick into the ribs. 
and they're spongy. They don't come out in one chunk. And you got to so get them out. You got to get them out. Cause they, they taste and smell. They smell they really smell bad. They smell bad when you cook them. Yeah. So they're way up there in the, in the, uh, the rib cage on both sides of the spine all the way up at the front. Usually I'll do a motion like this up against the ribs to loosen it. And I then bet you do. Stop it and then be able to pull it out. And then back here at the back. There's two little divots. That are smaller than my fingers on these little birds. Yeah. But you, if you push just right, you can kind of pop the kidney out, just like so. It's definitely tricky to get them out. The smaller the animal, the harder it is to clean when it comes to that stuff. Um, there you go. That there bird's go. clean. Now, slow down on this, because this is important. So you're going to do a slice right at the kneecap there, right where the joint would bend. We'll show you on the next one. Right where it would bend. Right you're gonna, there. Right there where it bends, right in between those two joints. That's where you're going to cut. That's going to be the bottom of your butcher mark. And then you can, these are going to be really easy to get off. Larger birds, it's a little more effort involved in getting the legs off sometimes, but, or the feet, I should say, not the legs. And these are excellent pig food. Excellent pig food. That goes in the crock pot. Okay, so now we come over here. A lot of times the actual esophagus doesn't come out with the, Or a piece of it side. anyway doesn't. So you got to pull it out the front. Yeah, you don't want to leave that in there. And then I take this skin and I just pull it back a little ways. And I get back here. Now, I highly recommend for removing this neck that you use butcher shears. One time, see that scar? I don't know if you see can see that. that. Scar? One time, I had a hold of a larger bird like this. And I had a hold of a knife like this. And I was pulling really hard trying to cut through that. And what happened is the bird slipped and somehow. I don't know how I didn't cut this. Maybe I was holding it like this. You were, yeah. Anyway, somehow the blade went into my wrist and it went deep. It went like that deep into the wrist underneath of underneath of an artery. Yeah. The doctor told me, because uh, I did go to the doctor and get it stitched up. The doctor told me that I needed to buy a lottery ticket on the way home. I forget how many stitches it was. I don't remember. I'll insert a picture right here and you it, can count yeah, them. Yeah, it was pretty. So I use shears now. Because uh, Cause, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me yeah. twice. <laughs> and there you go. So now we're going to weigh this little guy. Okay. Or girl. We, oh, I've actually, that was a girl. You never pulled out nads of love, did you? Didn't. It was a girl. But those might be nads of love. Oh, missed. you did. You missed nads of love. That's a boy. It's a boy. Mazel tov. Nads are so small, I can't get them out. They're like little, uh, they look like little white, what are those, uh, cannonelli beans. That's what they look like, those Italian beans. All right, there we go. Good call. Yeah, I know, I'm a genius like that. I'm going to make Sid a little chicken catcher, because I'm not crawling back in there. Search around on the internet, you can find these. And you, you can buy it. them. Huh? That's where you found it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw someone using one, and I think I found one on Amazon, and I was like, you gotta be kidding me. I got some, some heavy gauge wire laying around back there. It was used for crushing grapes, and then I've got, you know, who doesn't have a random uh, paint pole laying around? about it. Then you're going to take this and turn it out like so. There's the end result. If you can see that. The idea is we'll hook that chicken's leg. Right? Drag it to you. I volunteer as tribute. <laughs> that was easy. 
See? <laughs> I love it when they just fish jump in the barrel like that. That's great. says I'm afraid to get my hands dirty. <laughs> yoga and calisthenics. This is called downward chicken. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you definitely ain't right. <laughs> yesterday morning because we were butchering and we wanted our tummies empty and since you don't know who you're butchering. So let me grab the other feeder got shoved back here. We're going to refill their water too because they were drinking a lot more too because they weren't eating. Thank you. 